Hi guys, Fabio Palvelli here. Welcome back to my channel and Merry Christmas. First of all, I want to thank all of you for the first 5,000 followers on my channel. This is to me like it's mind blowing. I don't know. When I started out this adventure on YouTube, it was just a bunch of people that were watching my videos and now there is a community of like 5,000 people that at least once a week they tune in to see what I have to say and for that I'm just thankful. I, I don't know what to say. But anyway, before saying goodbye for the holidays I really wanted to do something special and so my friend Jakub Czech decided to get on the channel and do an interview. We had this idea, we wanted to talk about emotional imagery for architecture of visualization, but the conversation eventually brought us to talk about so many different things. And that's because Jakub is an extremely clever, an extremely intelligent, and an extremely interesting person. And so this is a conversation that goes on for a little bit more than one hour. Jakub recently made a movie where he talks about CGI as a new artistic means. It's a very interesting video. The link will be in the description. It's also been featured in the book that Bogdan Sasso made. Great talks about photorealism. He wrote his own book also. The guy's just like... <sighs> anyway, as always, enough of me, blah, blah, blah. Guys, Merry Christmas, thanks a lot for all the support, enjoy this beautiful talk with Jakub, and I guess I will see you at the beginning of January. I'm gonna take a couple of weeks off. All right, enjoy the talk. Jakub, you know what, before we start with the, with the interview and we we'll start talking about, you know, I wanna ask you everything about the emotional images that we have discussed in the past, um, I wanna know quickly, a little bit yes. by yourself, how you got started in this, in this business. You know, I always tell my guests to keep it fast, but you have such a fascinating story. Take all the time that you need, because <laughs> I think that people are going to be very inspired. Yeah, well, thank you for giving the, the space. Uh, well, so my, my, my story is I, actually, I like my first uh, touch with 3D was when I was 14. And I always liked, and I always like just like, you know, that fact that you see something three dimensional on two dimensional screen. Like that has been the first thing for me because I, first thing that I saw was only a, a, a capture of like 3ds Max interface. I had a computer that could probably not even run 3ds Max. And I was like, okay, I like it, though I didn't know what I'm looking at. I just like that fact, you know, it was maybe just a T-board or whatever cube in that interface. And later, uh, I asked my friend to download it, to download for me 3ds Max, and it was 3ds Max 7. Then he, you know, like uh, got me on a, a CD. I, I had like very slow internet at the time, and I installed it and I started playing with it. Maybe I was 15 or so, and I created a teapot and I created a box, and I was like, you know, how can I like get something more complex from it? And I was, and I said to myself like. Oh, this is a demo. Like you know, I like he he got me a bad version of 3ds Max that is like locked, and I deleted it, and then I like, didn't touch it for a year. But it was just like lack of knowledge, uh, and then I just started to look uh, some tutorials, and like it was very like th there was almost none tutorials. It was lag of like any videos, anything basically. Uh, but that at a time, I, I, I started to, I found uh, Marek Denko uh, work, uh, and I was like, okay, like, you know, that's such a big jump because there's no tutorial. All the Arquis related things looked uh, pretty much burnt, uh, like, like burned, and, you know, w basically many people used uh, some, in, in, in V-Ray, you know, you had so many tone mapping so, so like people used whichever and it looked like weird and then I saw like Mark Denko I was like you know what's going on it's like possible to get uh, to get something totally different out of that and at, at was the same time that I got to know uh, Bertrand Benoit and Alex Roman and that basically was like three my heroes that that I basically based everything on I just followed that, their work I even like read that auditorium making off from Alex Roman and like read it like it completely. So I did my auditorium. I was trying uh, a lot to follow these. 
Uh, also, Bertrand Benoit was great as he was uh, making the, that block post and making offs and stuff. And and this even oh, oh, uh, f- uh, even now it reminds me that I would love to like make a blog or or something where I can uh, tell things. But I need to find uh, that time because I can just reflect it to back to myself that if if I like saw on the images that great, but I was actually like more interested in that like making offs or some you know some tutorials or clues for those from those people. Uh, and that's basically also why I, I, I try to accept in, invitations to conferences or to interviews because I think like you know that work is one thing, but then like getting knowledge to people is that other thing that is ultra valuable, especially from people that like some of of your images. Uh, and Do then you after... feel like you owe to give back to the community. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> It's the same because I, I didn't like I I started basically I guess like everyone with free tutorials and free videos like nobody starts with I'm gonna buy you know software I'm gonna buy a, uh, something that is super priced here everyone starts with free things and then eventually gets to gets to it uh, so that's the same path as I had and I still you know think that it's important to to give back in that way. And uh, at the time, well, I'm not sure how much you're interested in that background, but I studied uh, like informatics, uh, and I was always into computers. And with with uh, with these projects, then I got like my first commercial project, which was uh, for a uh, Slovakian, uh, almost like kindergarten kindergarten furniture maker. And at the time, I made like a batch rendering of so many different uh, variations of wardrobes. And uh, it looked like that was, I was very happy with that. Uh, and then I created, do, do you know uh, Rihanna's California King Bat video clip? Ultra old. It was like very, very long bat uh, and, and like a garden all around. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about, but I'll have to go and dig it out to make sure. Yeah. And uh, so, so it, I, I, re, I am. I, this isn't is a music art. video, right? Exactly. Okay. But I, I liked it, and it was bad. Uh, so I redid it, and that was like a, then it was like a big boom on the hands, and people started to like ask me, "Can I buy it?" It was it was a weird time that I had like different jobs. I made a model of a tractor. Uh, I remember I did that. The, yeah, that was one of my uh, first models, and uh, basically after after uh, my projects uh, like uh, Tina K Home, which is older of my projects. I got uh, I got a call. I was maybe like 16. But I was very lucky to, to study English here on a language school. I got a call from uh, from America. But, you know, I was just like a kid in my in my like uh, <laughs> in my parents uh, house, the bedroom. I was maybe, I don't know, 17. And I got like a weird call on my phone, uh, American number. And she started to talk English, and I could talk English. And and she said that she found my uh, portfolio. Uh, if if I could like do how she asked me like how would I do a te- uh, like a image from a rooftop? She was like trying to probably uh, you know like prove me if I if I am like even legit if it's like my work or something. It, I guess it was like very weird even for them. So I, I uh, described it. Then they gave me like one one uh, test uh, image to do. It was a time that there were very few like solo artists that that has been you know in, in uh, working that way. And I did that, and then I got like my first big project, which was I guess fifteen images from uh, right away from New York. So and and I I've never I've never really was chasing a client. Back then I was maybe on. Uh, high school or like starting university. How many years like... ago is that? So Wetson and Company, uh, well, that first project, I'm gonna check actually. Um, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's called, called Sullivan on the on the Behance, and uh, this uh, project was finished. Let me see actually. Because Here. it's like you said, you know, like back then you were not chasing the clients yourselves. And I think um, it, it used to be also different, meaning that, you know, even if you were chasing the clients, maybe back then as a solo artist, it might have been a little bit easier because of less competition. Oh, yeah. um, so, so so this project started in 2013. Okay. 
So it's it's not that long ago, but it's still like six, seven years ago. Uh, yes, and uh, as you said, I was uh, I was not. So that means I was like above twenty already. Uh, after a couple of personal projects, and I had a lot of on and offs. Uh, so like it's a time that I didn't want to like do three D at all, and then I like again started it, and I like. I was very on and off because I couldn't get it. When image. did you decide to say, okay, you know what? This is it. Archivist. I'm going with it 100% and, you know. Yeah. Uh, one, one more uh, sentence to what you said about those clients. Back then, it was like so much easier to get a client because later as, as like years passed and I, was, and I was like, oh, now I have something like to show and it's going to like two, 20 times more clients to come. Actually, so much time pa uh, uh, passed that the, the uh, industry got much saturated, that the clients were fewer and fewer. So, and I, and I wasn't expecting it because, you know, like w the first time when you get a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, messages like, okay, so in, in two years when I do something, I think better, I'm going to get more, but it was like changing. And that's, yeah. so I, I, I especially uh, felt that what you say, and it was uh, quite surprising. And I'm sorry, what was the other question? The other question, I think this is very important. So, you know, feel free to interrupt me if I'm breaking your train of thoughts. It's OK. <laughs> when then did you decide, OK, you know what? I'm going to do archivists alone and yeah. that's my focus and that's it. When did you do that? So after that first project, uh, first project, the big one commercial with uh, Watson and Company from New York, uh, which was then released in 2014. I was uh, given another project and I was asked uh, to come from them. Uh, well, at that time, uh, when I was asked to come, I was, uh, I didn't want to like interrupt uh, school study. So I went there during summer. And uh, I think it was summer 2014 back then. And uh, it's been like a huge uh, leap from my comfort zone. Uh, I went there alone to New York, like directly from Slovakian village, uh, with uh, basically wanted to absorb as much knowledge as I ca as I could. I I mean, I, you know, at the time I wasn't really sure what I want to be. I just knew that like that thing is going to give me so much experience, and that I'm you know stumbling into something very unique and very different, especially from where I have been. Uh, and that was the time that I realized that. I basically didn't really want to like focus on real estate, uh, but at the same time, that was the time that I said to myself that I'm going to focus 100%. It was like a phase that I also was like finding myself in life through like all together. And after like coming back, I knew that I that I didn't want to like uh, do precisely real estate. But I knew that I want to like uh, focus 100% of my time on 3D and like uh, not not have any more on and offs. And it was and I said that I want to uh, finish my school, which was one year to go. And after that, 100% 3D without any anything else. And that was like the time that I said I'm gonna like go 100%. So I finished my school and then I started to work on a book. And since starting working on a book. I, and finishing school, I have not like done anything else than this and like all day long and, you know, just every day and just like basically giving all my time to it. Man, okay, let me just uh, segue towards the core of this discussion because the reason why I want to talk to you, it's because of the fact that, you know, you create this very emotional imagery. And I think that emotional imagery, it's also a word that you use explicitly about yes. the work that you do. Um, let, me, let, me, let me understand what you mean when you talk about emotional imagery. What are yeah. the most important points for you to you know, define the quality of an image, the quality of a, a good work? What are your parameters? Yes. Well, uh, for, first of all, I, I need to uh, uh, admit that I, I think I have like a very different taste and like look on images, but you know, not, not, not in a like better way, just in a very different way. I always loved uh, like photography on film by wedding photographers. I okay. always loved so much wedding photography. It, it was... Uh, That's and, really and the first time that I hear that. <laughs> 
Exactly. And I thought about it because in the end, like, and you know, in the end, I always feel, and I probably always will feel that, that I am a stranger in Artvis because I actually, like, core of my passion is not that architecture. It's only the shapes that, that like, that, like, happen in an image. It's almost like an abstract uh, art. So I find, I, I, and the, the shapes and, like, the gradients and things that happen, it's just like a coincidence that are usually connected with architecture and interiors because I'm, I'm a minimalist uh, and I find those gradients and things, especially, you know, in, in, in interiors and in Arquis, but it never been like uh, that much about architecture. I can find, you know, like architect makes a building and I focus on a little, little thing that I find interesting and it makes some shape. Uh, so... Uh, I've, I've always felt like a stranger and to like answer your question in terms of the quality and, and, and uh, what, I, what I think about it when I say emotional, uh, for me, uh, and it's subjective, it's not like a standard or anything, this is very subjective, but for me to trigger my like emotions, uh, uh, emotion, uh, emotional like image is usually closer to a subject, uh, so it's you know, like not showing that much. And uh, ba basically, uh, I, I create uh, for clients these strips, uh, like a collages of usually three uh, renderings, where one is a little bit like, let's say, me detail, and two are details, where it's basically like uh, making you, you know, when, when you enter a space and you like sit on, on a couch, you focus on, on you, you don't like, uh, you know, you, you observe things very separately that make something for you. Like you love the fabric of a chair and you look at it and you feel that there is a greenery behind you. You know, you don't perceive everything like altogether. Uh, like the, I think that, that uh, uh, human have these emotional like I inner triggers that, they, uh, that are much more personal than just observing the whole space. It's like, you know, I, I look at this and I see some ambience around and, you know, it's much more personal. So that's like, that's how I... Uh, that's how I think that this is uh, the thing for me. And on the other side, I'm a minimalist. I'm like a huge minimalist. So I just like delete everything again. <laughs> but that is like, now that's like ultra subjective. So I think sometimes this is a little bit of a fight that um, visualization artists or visualization designers need to fight with their clients because, you know, the clients, they see value in showing the space we see value in communicating emotions. And I think that sometimes uh, it takes a little bit of a struggle to talk to the client and make them understand that because yes. the client, you know, think sometimes that we're just trying to sell more images or that we're trying to do something that reflects more our agenda and not theirs, which is, you know, sometimes uh, silly, but in a way, what I like about you, because I've seen the layouts of your work, uh, you present more than one image when you show you a project to your client. And I think that this is very yes. powerful because, you know, you're not only communicating the space, you're communicating like these points of focus. How do you manage this? Because, you know, some, some artists, they might say, you know, these are three images and you have to pay me for three images. But you instead, you do it with the, with the hope that the client understand what you're trying to do. And even mm -hmm. if it might be a little bit more work, I think the way you do it, it's a lot more effective. Am I wrong or? Well, you know, also f for me is, and I've tried to like think about this, but it's a little bit harder for me to like get to, to someone who, for example, starts right now when it's like much more saturated because I could grow together with my clients and like the industry almost. And, uh, you know, like w I basically at that summer that I went back and I did the book, I wanted to make the book to, to basically uh, show everything that I love and therefore would be naturally clients that want the same would be naturally attracted. So my clients, they basically, I don't have any client uh, that don't know what I do right now. And like, I, I don't need to fight for anything. They, they want that. They, I have a client that like his favorite image is a detail, you know, and that's like, you know, who has a client that his favorite image is a detail? Like, you know, that's very rare. 
Uh, so, uh, but in the end, I had also projects where I had to fight, as you say, and uh, you, you to to do it, uh, you know, like to to reach that, it takes a huge amount of effort from an artist of like communicational kind. That's like something you can't you can't cut out for from anything. Mm-hmm. You, like spending a lot of time with client and even teaching him why that is important, why it's going to bring that, what is going to make an impact like you you can't make that work without client understanding and and you knowing so it takes a lot of time and of course when you want to win over that client to make an example and, and show it like that what what i did one time was that i was like uh, asked to do seven images and i did 30 and i did like strips and i like didn't you know i i didn't like uh i i went a little bit mute and i just like did my thing and i was like you know like this is it and then like everyone was crazy designers loved it you know everyone was crazy and they like bought all the detail images in the end too uh it's uh you know r- especially right now uh, that that we don't have those standards and so on it's hard it's a personal fight but it's possible to win especially uh, with a lot of communication, with showing what you want, with the, describing, and of course with building a portfolio where you show it so you attract natural clients that want it too. I think, you know, this is one of the things that um, somehow in the conversations that we've had in the past, it always transpired about you. You're not the kind of person, it seems to me, I might be wrong, that you you get in communication with somebody and you say, okay, this is what we're going to do. No, I see you proactive in everything that you do and you like to bring your own touch to things. And I think that probably this is what makes your work also very much different from, you know, uh, all the people that are trying to start out right now and they struggle because, you know, they're trying to place themselves um, as executioner of the work whilst you're more of a curator of the work yeah and you know i don't know if this has to do with the experience or if it's a talent of yours that you might have but maybe you want to uh, pick it up from here and explain me your point of view uh yeah i mean it's it's a mixture of few things i i think that a huge part of that is that i started early which you know uh the other thing is that uh, uh, th- that is like one big thing that enabled for that, and uh, the other is that it's very hard to, or it takes a lot of time to learn like three D in a way that you would be happy with an image, mm-hmm. and also then understand the let's say creative or or business side of marketing of something so you can advise on that or give uh, impression. So I think it's a combination of everything because I've had enough time to. To, I, I worked at that creative agency, and I and I went to meetings. I understand what I want. I understand how designers think. I understood how you know what they're building, so I could play on all those strings while talking to clients. Uh, you know, which is very broad knowledge. Uh, so so maybe that, but you know, I mean, in the end, I don't know. I think it's it's combination of like starting a little early and and getting more more uh, general knowledge on fields that you can play on. So would you recommend to somebody um, that it's starting out now to maybe get a job first and then try to do their own things? Because, you know, like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. the fact that you worked for somebody and he showed you an aspect of uh, taking care of business that might be difficult to learn if you're not with under the lead of somebody. Would you recommend it? Uh, Well, that De- there is definitely I, I well i would definitely recommend it i don't think that you know having either side solely is the way to go because you need to have time to evolve yourself alone but you need also to work with someone and 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 be totally open to what they say and learn from there too because to to like to use the tools and to get to know your lighting and stuff yes you need to spend uh, countless nights uh, alone. On but your own. <laughs> to, uh, excuse me? On your own. Exactly. But to understand many other things, you need to spend time uh, with someone or under someone. So it's a combination. It's like a balance and it's always going to be a balance. Let me ask you a very easy, maybe banal question because, you know, like artists, they always 
come up to me and they ask me, oh, what do you think it's the secret sauce or the secret ingredient? I know it's never as easy to answer <laughs> these type of questions, but if, if I were to ask you what is your secret or the, the secret sauce for your images, how would you answer to this question the easiest way possible? Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there is no easy it's way. Fu it's funny, Every, everyone looks for secret thing. Like that, that's like normal. I, I, I search for secret thing for years. And I found like something that worked a lot for me. And I think that, you know, it's like in inevitable for everyone to find for that because eventually everyone will get to it. But the thing is that it's different for everyone. So uh, my what why what I think is is my secret sauce almost is uh, is that I found that I can uh, that I have a very precise eye in ter in terms of like replicating some phenomena and like catching uh, ca like basically you know uh, trying uh, like catching th things uh, that are uh, many times done very generally but can be much more specific. Uh, but in the end, like when I found my first thing that I thought was the secret sauce, it was my tone mapping where I played in magic bullet looks and I like, uh -huh. basically I wanted to quit 3D and then I, you know, like put this, uh, raw render rendering to magic bullet looks and I like, uh, opened one of the preset and it looked like great. And that has been like, okay, this is my secret sauce. That's part of my secret sauce. And I still use that same. Uh, tone mapping or a L, L, L lot or whatever you call it still now the same 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 one and I uh, it mimics like a little bit more filmic look so that's like one part of my secret sauce and the other thing is that the the perspectives and uh, all the other things I like are are related to wedding photography so I'm a mixture of like something that's sort of not connected to art with and that's I think you know that 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 builds that builds me after I'm going to publish this video, the sales of Magic Bullet will go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they will skyrocket. I, <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I think it was a, it was a very, you know, in terms of like images that were made, I still think that back then, like five years ago, four years ago, there were some images done that that were so different and are still so beautiful. Like it's. You know, I, I have a, have a feeling that yes, like overall the 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 bar raises, but like some projects that that were done back then with that technology and that algorithms and like magic bullet looks were so unique in some ways, and I still like love that you know era if 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 you will. <laughs> but uh, magic bullet looks for you know today, uh, well, I'm not sure, but it's definitely great uh, in terms of technical knowledge. Let me. Okay, let me ask you one more thing about the, the, the side of making images, the emotional side of making images. Uh, we hear very often the word, you know, the, the expression storytelling. Now, yeah. you're not the kind of person that spends a lot of time photoshopping people. I never really mm -hmm. see people in your images. No, uh, and you never will. <laughs> <laughs> but still, like... I do think that you manage to still tell a story and that's probably because of the utilization of details that you do. Exactly. I, I would like to hear you talking a little bit about this because, you know, like uh, I've had in the past, I made some videos where I talked about storytelling yeah. and very often people misunderstand this by thinking that, you know, they have to make images where there is a woman that is going to do shopping or I don't know, yeah. somebody playing with a, a balloon or whatever. Yeah. Well, they, they are definitely different, uh, like actual meanings of storytelling. Uh, like the most literal one, of course, is like you place a human that you know plays baseball in an image. That's, of course, the literal way of it. But uh, last year, I made a presentation on 3D December, especially about those like uh, that storytelling and how I try to like tell a story, and it's a different way uh, where I'm trying to basically. Tell us, uh, not not uh, make an emotional connection with like how human would uh, would perceive a space by making that like one mid detail and making two details. So it almost like gives you like okay, I went there, I've sit on that, uh, I've sit on a chair, and I looked up on a greenery, and there was like a light hitting me, and I feel very comfortable. Oh, beautiful. Okay. 
So, you know, and, and that's it. Like, you is that story? Well, I think it is because you, you can yeah. see you, you sitting there, you can see you feeling that light coming to you. And maybe, you know, there's a curtain of the, of the image that brings like a dappled shadow and you can feel that there's a lighting, you know, on, on your hand, like yeah. uh, hitting you and you feel warm and comfortable. So you came there and that's what you feel. And that's a like, you know, emotional story. And that's what, you know, I think that eventually spaces many times uh, want to evoke on some, on some level. They want you to feel that or comfortable or they want you to feel luxury or they want you to feel, you know, and that's like that that's that's that domain that I try to play in. I really like that because you know, like sometimes when we talk about stories, the word story it's used also to say, you know, we're having a conversation, you and I, and you tell me a story. Maybe it's a boring story, but it's still communicative in a sense. And so, you know, sometimes even if we have to recur to say boring it's always better to try and communicate something than try not to communicate anything at all mm -hmm. and i see that you know even if the story it's not that interesting like you know there is some light coming in some people might say yeah this is boring but i think that in in terms of like wanting to communicate something it's still a very powerful idea you know it's better than no idea whatsoever you know what i mean well, I know what you mean. The, the, the only danger in there is that, you know, ha having like a very, let's say, no, having nothing is, is clear to everyone. Yeah. Having something triggers only to certain uh, people that have the same subjective yes. feeling. But then so again, it, this is what made you so special with your clients, right? Exactly. Because yes. they come to you specifically for that thing. And so exactly. I think that in a way, the way you strategized on the production of your work, it's a lot more clever than the way I see a lot of other people trying to uh, catch every fish possible. Instead, mm -hmm. you know, you found a way you specialized and you're basically like, a, a very important column in the field of architectural visualization when it comes to that kind of work. And everybody knows you because of that type of work, you know? So I think this is also very clever. Well, thank you. It, it means a lot to me. That's, well, very, it's, very, uh, it's not a, lot, a fake a compliment. I think you know how good you are. That's, that's the reason why we put you in the, <laughs> in the book. And well, thank you way, so much for that. Oh, my pleasure, man. And I think, you know, like, um, I don't know if people realize that you were published in this book, but uh, I, I've read your, uh, your interview. And one thing that surprised me about you is that even though there is this whole artistical research, you're still very much a technical person. <laughs> I'm an ultra technical person. I, can you expand a little bit on that? Because it's very surprising, you know, when you sometimes when you talk about being technical and being artistical, people see a clear separation and they say you cannot yeah. have one without the other. Yet we have somebody like you that. Well, I'm, I'm very actually happy and uh, thankful for, for, for that. I love like technical things and I also love, you know, and I have a, a, a huge emotional triggers for that artistic visual part. And I think that only that like in enabled me to create some of my uh, some of my works because uh, so I, I have like by, by the time I evolved this uh, let's say view over you know what wh what we're doing right now and where we are right now uh, I think that like what what I do is is basically part of a a field that does not exist yet. And if you, if you like, like as, as the film that I recently published says, CGI might be in museums in a couple of years. CGI, and, and uh, th this year I also shared on the conference that I believe that like our tools are evolving and eventually it's going to become just as easy as taking a photograph. So, you know, what is going to be left is, this, is that like artistry part. And then once it's easy, like as, uh, just as easy, there's gonna there's this like a huge field uh, that that works might you know come to museums or wherever else that is not as much re uh, industry related, mm -hmm. and I think that you know that technical uh, and 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 at, because of how uh, technical CGI right now is, uh, I could I could like play I I could 
let's say, be in, in, that, in that field right now because I'm so technical. Because to do CGI right now, you need to be technical. And, and especially five years ago, ultra technical. Ten years ago, you could not. Only companies could do it. So, uh, and in terms of, uh, so, so, so that's like wh why I uh, think that I could, you know, do these images uh, because I'm technical and also have that visual triggers, uh, which I'm not sure if this like altogether uh, answers your question. <laughs> well, you know, um, I think that, you know, you're a little bit underestimating your technical abilities. Like you're saying, yeah, I'm okay. technical, but you know, uh, you're very technical. I mean, you yeah, made, yeah, I'm ultra very technical. You made scripts. You made like tools that I, allow you to improve I, your I, work. I would, I, I definitely spend more time on technical part than on like uh, visual part. That's like for sure. Even for the for for this like uh, commercial project that I'm working on right now, I uh, I uh, created the the scanning studio as you've seen a glimpse in the film. Mm -hmm. So it, it, like together also with all the scripts and tools to automatize it to like you know make the uh, diffuse maps correct uh, lightness with you know measuring of like uh, whatever uh, a lux uh, with lux meter and with like white targets and like of course I I and I love that domain I I love that basically it's a domain that I feel more secure in mm. because artistry is like you know you can do whatever and still say artistic but technical is like either it works or it doesn't work or you know it's it's a little bit different domain but uh, definitely like in the end I'm uh, probably more more of a time technic technician than than visual artist let me let me ask you because you mentioned it a couple of times you have recently released a fantastic movie i'm going to put the link in the video description so that people can you know go and see it um i don't want to say anything about this movie if you were to explain it to somebody that just sees you for the first time what would you say yeah. about this movie uh, yeah well i uh well, w would it be a person that knows CGI or not? <laughs> but that's to me the interesting thing because the approach of this movie, it's not exactly. done only for somebody that knows CGI. It's done for like the wider public, broad audience. Correct. So that like I basically for that film, uh, it's connected to a commercial project that happened in Brazil where the client was like probably the, the, the most aligned with my thoughts client ever. We spent so much time together. I spent four months working on those Im uh, images and, and he loved them, he, uh, he liked them. So in the end, they decided to make an art exhibition in Rio with those, which, which, is, you know, which is basically uh, bringing an opportunity. And uh, the, the movie is, uh, with the movie I wanted to, I wanted to solve a few issues that I had throughout, like, you know, throughout old times. And that is like talking to my family, talking to my friends and talking to basically everyone is like, they have no idea what you do. And, <laughs> and even you like, whatever you say, it's not going to make an image picture for them. You it's had like, to make you know, a movie. I, I, <laughs> you know, you, I do photo that is not a photo. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's nice. You know, goodbye. And, but basically, you know, the, the, I think it's a big personal issue. In you terms have of to like, forgive you, me if I'm laughing, but I can relate to this so much. It's like I made a movie to explain my girlfriend what I do. <laughs> I, I literally that's like 50 percent of what I did because because look like, you know, everyone has a family, has a siblings and you make an image that you love and you're like, oh, look what I did. I work a month on it. And they're like, OK, nice image, you know, and like done. But, but like, you know, where is that coming from that you can't share the joy and then, you know, but that's that's also why I think that CGI community is so like lovely and is so friendly because they are not getting any value from their personal closest circle. Uh, the other thing, so that was like one thing trying to, you know, and, and that would basically, uh, I, I wanted to, to paint uh, a picture uh, what a CGI for everyone. And in a very naive, in a very uh, easy to understand way. Uh, and the other thing was uh, sharing the beliefs, uh, as as we talked that that for, uh, that CGI is going to be 
uh, as relevant as photography is going to get less commercial, is going to get even more artistic, is going to get simpler. And there's this big field, there's this big sphere that, that is, is, not, is, is basically no one in yet, uh, where people will be able to do whatever they would like to, and they will not pick pencil, they will not pick a chisel, they will not do sculpture, they will not paint it, but they will choose CGI. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be so uh, elaborated and so evolved, so easy as picking a brush, as taking photograph that they will do it. And there's this huge, huge, huge sphere that is not connected to industry. Because right now, yes, you can go to art station, but what you see, you see spaceships, you see all this stuff that is you know industry produced. It's like people that work for industry and they love that part. Uh, but then there is this huge uh, field of you know, like globally appreciated art that, that is currently empty because CGI is very technical. So sharing all the beliefs, trying to solve the problems, here you got the film. <laughs> Let me ask you though, because I mean, I know you're also a very savvy and clever business person. You know, the fact that you have your own company and you run it and you know, the, the perception of the value of the work that you do, it's of course, you know, high. Um, has this video also used you, uh, sorry, has this video also helped you to kind of like propel yourself even more above, you know, the competition? Because it was a big what? investment, right? Well, yes. I mean, together with the, with the website, it's basically all self-funded uh, uh, sources. Uh, the, 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 well, to answer your question is impossible because I don't, you know, I, I, I can't say from the, the, the point of view of competition. But the thing is that as I, as I see myself being in that, in that field that is, 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 you know, is not re related that much to industry and is uh, almost, you know, mo uh, let, let's say uh, uh, is, is not as saturated. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really feel any pressure from like the industry. I, I, uh, I have my clients that I uh, work with right now, uh, that, that, that understand that, that, that one, that even in the film, Amal basically w was talking about it to one of uh, my clients and friends. Uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of that rank, I really don't know. Uh, it's hard to say, but what I would love to do. With, with that film and with uh, with the website and and these uh, base uh, these tools that that we've built is that I'm I'm talking to different medias uh, and you know I would love to get this idea to to relevant people so I'm talking to Serial Magazine right now and I would love to you know I I wanted to build tools to be able to distribute this uh, these beliefs and and be, because you know eventually what I would love to do is that in, in, in few years when I bump to someone and I say, you know, I'm a CGI artist and, and they say, okay, I know what that is. Yeah. Although they don't know, but they have a you know, picture yes. of like representative values in their mind. And uh, in terms of competition, I'm, you know, I, I, I made it in a time that I'm like ultra happy with my clients right now, that I'm basically next year, we're starting with uh, a New York startup where I'm a partner okay. and uh, I'm, you know, basically, I just wanted to build something that will, will, will distribute these values, uh, you know, along w without really, you know, uh, wanting a specific uh, business goal. I just, I just wanted to build something that I would see myself very valuable and timeless. And uh, I would love to get it to those medias right now to get to people. So I'm that's, pretty that, sure, that's the idea. I'm pretty sure that this is only a question of time because, I mean, the video really is a beautiful piece of art and it's, uh, I think it's perfect. It's very well balanced. It's not too long. I think the message is clear and also the work is stunning. You know, it's, uh, you don't get tired to see it. The picture is beautiful, very cinematographic, you know, Hopefully people that will watch this they will click on the link and they'll go and see your video because it's really It's really that, that, that be, well. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me, you know and from, uh, it, Yes, the thing is that from my side because you probably know I work in the field of strategy and I work together with archive archivist offices and I help them you know with like their own branding and 
the way they uh, acquire clients. That's what I do. And mm -hmm. looking at this video, this is a great exercise to tell your story. And the moment that you tell your story, you're basically putting yourself out there for clients to know who you are. And that's yes. why to me, it's a, an extremely clever thing to do because you're presenting yourself. And this is a, a thing that artists very often they fail at doing because we're very good at telling other people's stories, but we never really tell our story. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a victim of that. I mean, if you go to my website, there is nothing. There is only like the links to the stuff that I've done and I'm working on that. So I promise you. <laughs> I understand. And at the same time, I, I agree that it's it, it, like, it, you know, th this is going to take like years to, to get further where I want it. You know, like only 0. You know, 0.0001% of things like are viral. Uh, the other is, is hard work. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm fully committed to to you know like uh, communicate with uh, with medias and like you know I I have a feeling that that uh, these things could be picked by relevant medias and uh, you know def definitely I'm um, you know not like I know that this is gonna be a long uh, ride let's say uh, but you know I I I, I just. It, it, it's actually like tricky because you know everyone would love to build something and then have like immediate success out of it <laughs> but uh um, um i believe that you know it's like, like that that film every time i revisit it and i've and i've put like months of thoughts into it and like months of work and like seeing it from all the possible angles and every time i revisit it i say you know this is what i want to say this is what i believe in and uh this is what i think will uh, will be true even after three or five or ten years mm -hmm. and that's why it like uh, it, it, it doesn't like bring me down to to post it to send it to you know I, I know this is gonna be a long ride but I think you know it's, it's gonna get there and hopefully uh, people will uh, even th uh, thanks to that start to be more uh, knowledgeable about what CGI is but the reality is that nowadays everything takes time we live in a society where we believe that things are actually faster than they actually are. But it takes mm -hmm. time with everything. I mean, you know, yeah. th think about your work. How long did it take you for you to, you know, make a, a huge quality jump? It wasn't something that you did in one year. It took you, it, it was a process, right? You had some epiphanies during this time. But it wasn't like, oh, tomorrow I start to make great images, you know? Yeah. It's a very long process. And I think that, you know, it would be beneficial for people to hear this more often because I, I get a lot of messages from people that say, how? How do I do this? How do I do this? And probably, you know, it's the fact that we live in the tutorial era, you know, where there is an answer to everything. But actually, I think that when it comes to life, there is no tutorial, you know, you just <laughs> do it and in 10 years we will see who is still doing whatever it is that they love doing. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. And, and I, I basically re relied on these words from some other people uh, before. And it's always, I, I, you know, I, I'm, 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 I totally believe that it's always going to be like that. And every time you like hear anyone uh, saying it, that it takes time uh you, you know it's 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 something that definitely helps you then not not lose it because it always takes time mm -hmm. and it's always going to be so i definitely i 100% agree with what you said let's talk a little bit about inspiration um is there anybody that you see a little bit as a you know inspiration or as a reference for your work and um for the way you do things is there somebody that you look up to yeah, well, my my, my uh, role heroes just still are the same. So, <laughs> uh, Alex Roman being number one, uh, and more. Well, of course, Mark Denko. But but these uh, guys are like uh, making less less uh, less and less of work, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, basically, I, I I still stay to my roots. I don't. I I, I very like hardly pick new heroes. 
and from like photography, it's uh, Jose Viola, who is uh, a film, uh, that, I mean, wedding photographer who shoots on film. And these people always say my like idols. I, I basically like my visual uh, triggers didn't really change, which is weird, but I like kind of similar things still. I see. Well, you know, it's a. Uh... It still catch him, catch him up by me. <laughs> no, but it's cool, you know, because it's like it, it also shows the fact that you're determined, you know, and the the vision in your life hasn't changed. You know, you you continue walking that path. I heard a couple of uh, days ago somebody said to me that life is a straight line, and you need to understand that it's a straight line. It only gets steeper, and so mm -hmm. you know the further you go the more you have to push and sometimes you know it's it is true you know like uh, you just told me the my heroes are still the same and i'm like okay so this guy has it maybe figured out that you know you the vision it's the same you just keep pushing yeah i i uh, i still feel like what alex roman did is you know like impossible on on a i think yeah like two quad core uh, four core machine, you know, making a. I still I can't render a twelve minute film right now, so I'm like still, it's impossible. So he, you know, like uh, I I uh, the, the 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 further like I I go and the further I live, the more I appreciate it basically, which uh, you know is uh, also connected with that curve. I still I still I I, I think that the the more like higher on the curve you go. Uh, the more things you appreciate too, and it's still it's still the same that I view these people, especially in the era they made it. Yeah, it's true. If you look back, I mean, it's still very impressive. You know, like sometimes I catch people reading on the forums. You know that the colors of the movie nowadays they don't look as good. The GI doesn't look as good. And I'm like. It's been 10 years and I'm still not able to make a movie just like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Jakub, what is the highlight of your career so far? Uh, well, I think that the two or well, yeah, two main highlights are one of them is book, which has been a big, uh, basically a, a one year project for me. And the other is right now that film, the the uh, CGI and artistic medium. Those definitely, in my in my eyes, are the biggest highlights. Uh, and I and I like like uh, spending or working on a bigger projects where I can spend a lot of time where I can go deep. So both of them took so much time and are you know a big uh, grouped uh, projects. So those are uh, uh, highlights. And the other, hopefully, that might come out is is next year, the the moment is on, which is a uh, which is a partnership with a startup. So, do you mean these kind of highlights or the, what I what I'm what else? I'm trying to do? Because you know, like the people that watch these videos are either artists or designers or maybe you know people working in architecture. What I try to do, I want to understand how those that do this job see happiness and so you know i'm i speculate that a highlight would be something that brings you happiness right joy okay. and satisfaction and so i want to know i want to understand what it is that uh you know floats your boat if you like what is it that <laughs> make that make you happy because you know sometimes uh, you know like i've met a lot of people that maybe were struggling financially from a professional point of view, but they were yeah. doing something that they really, really liked. And to them, it did not matter if they were making money. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, after a little bit of time, this narrative shifted because they thought that they were happy, but money actually turned out to be a very important component in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's I'm always trying to understand how it is that uh, artists and designers balance their mental sanity. In other words, okay. how do we define happiness in this industry? That's basically my question. That's where I want to go. 
Okay. So, well, in terms of uh, like work and, and, and finance, I, I, for many years, I thought the same. That it's, you know, like it's not as important to do uh, or, you know, to, to be able to uh, make uh, money as much as making a great image. Uh, but of, I think that, you know, this is going to be the same for everyone and, and many people. If there's this, not this knowledge, it's going to be always the same. Is a part where you where you uh, believe that, but like as time goes and you finish school and you you know make yourself independent and get on a family, th this is a not sustainable way of 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 living of of having happiness. Of course, the the biggest joy <laughs> comes from a great image that you like. <laughs> uh, but 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 I think it's super important to know everyone is going to finish the school, get independent, and all these things. So, so to think about that as, as, as much up in front is like super important because I even personally had maybe two years of, of, of being pretty desperate because of finance, uh, which of course then, you know, makes you, makes you not enjoy as much the, 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 even the work. I mean, you know, all things are not going as planned because of that. So, so... I think that you know, still building that portfolio that's going to bring you clients that that like what you do, and then evolving on that, and you know, getting also the business side working correctly, is uh, is important. So so that that sanity or or those things that you do, sh basically should will of course change, and I think that you know the artistry and business part, if we divide it like that. That the further it goes, you know, the more also the business part needs to be done uh, well and and you know like kept. So because otherwise, and but I guess it's gonna be for everyone like that. If there is not this knowledge, there's gonna be time that like you know of burnout on, of like you know in terms of finance and stuff. So uh, I I think that the the highlights are of course in in the beginning the great images. But then also having those clients that you spend a lot of time with and, uh, you know, maybe shifting a little bit uh, also towards the business uh, successes. It's, um, I think this is a very important thing for people to understand. And I think that, you know, the fact that uh, we have all these events and the fact that we have this community is helping a little bit the 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 industry to be lift up because you know like before when you did not have the chance to go and talk to people in events you did not have the chance to share the stories and to understand you know uh, different points of view also um, and you know you told me you were at the 3 December I was also there aren't Ukrainian people like a lot of fun <laughs> They are definitely. They are ultra lovely and they are ultra passionate. It's like you know, the, the, it's it's the, the the CGI pit. I had a it's lot a, of fun this year. We we were laughing a lot, and uh, I don't know. It's it's a lot of fun, and we were with these friends of ours, the guys from uh, Submarina Studio. Yeah, they're really funny. You know, it's like oh yeah, uh, I love them too. Yeah. I'm uh, saying hello to them by yeah. the way. We, we, we gonna <laughs> we gonna see each other there pretty soon. <laughs> uh, listen, one more thing before we go, because believe it or not, we've been talking already for almost an hour. Time flies. It's crazy. Incredible. Yeah, I know. Um, I would like to know if there was like a life lesson that you have learned along the way. If there was something that you could that you will feel like you want to say to somebody that, you know, it's just starting out, what would that thing be? Yeah, well, I, I guess this would go, uh, you know, this is something I would say, but is, I think, like, generally accepted as not only for CGI, but overall, and that is that, uh, you know, don't, don't like, when you want to read something, you know, it's going to come sooner or later when, when you persist, where you don't stop. Don't so probably stop. that. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> A anyone watching this, if you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, don't stop. Don't ever stop. Jakub, 
I wanna thank you so much for the time that you took to do this interview. I'm gonna put all the links for, you know, the book and, uh, and the, uh, the video as well. I'm also going to put a link to the book where you are published here, the book from Bogdan Sasu. Um, is there anything else that you want to add to this conversation before we say goodbye? Well, I would just love to thank you for inviting me. My and, pleasure, you know, man. Th this has been <laughs> delayed till the summer, so thank you for, you know, uh, replying for my like, sorry, I can't like 100 times. Uh, and it's been super lovely. I'm super thankful to you and also, you know, saying hi and thanks everyone for, for watching or for following. And uh, I would love to know, you know, uh, I'm, I'm open for, for talking to anyone if, if, if you'd like to connect. Uh, so, you know, saying, saying hi to everyone too. Oh, and by the way, Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas. It's, Today is it's the 22nd of December. I think <laughs> I'm going to upload this video tonight. I'm going to do some editing on it. But Merry Christmas, people. <laughs> <laughs> Jakob, Merry Christmas don't to, go... to everyone and to you, to Fabio. My pleasure, man, and thanks a lot for doing this. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to stop the recording so that I can say goodbye to you, okay? Amazing. All right. <laughs> thanks a lot for doing this, man. Thank you so much.